So welcome everybody, good evening. Glad you were able to join us for our Thursday evening Anamkara meditation program. So with all my heart, I welcome you to our program tonight and into my home temple. And I'm so glad you were able to join us and such a privilege to be here with you. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for lending the power of your practices and your attention to this evening's program. So here we are at the, the last Thursday of the month, and so this is our Heart Sutra night. So we'll be doing the Heart Sutra in a few minutes. And we're going to begin first, of course, with the opening mantras. And the power of mantra is that power that is really that throb of consciousness, the throb of the infinite, uh, literally seen as the, the sound form of the divine. So when we're chanting, listening, becoming absorbed in mantra, we're able to then move beyond the ordinary mind and all the ordinary uh, you know, movements of mind, thoughts, feelings, sensations, memories, stuff about the future, stuff about the past, all that, uh, and come into the present. Because mantra is literally always arising here and now. Even if we're not hearing it, even if we're not conscious of it, Mantra and the throb of mantra is arising. And so it's said that in, for instance, the Shashumna Nadi, the central channel of energy that runs through the subtle body, that, uh, upon which the, the chakras are strung like so many pearls on this divine thread. Well, it's constantly throbbing with Om, Om, the root of all creation, the throb of the, the spanda, the, the, the throb of Shakti taking the form of the universe, of the mind, of the body. So mantra is always there, uh, and the more we become absorbed in it, the more we can become conscious of that support. Because it is so, uh, such a, a living, continuous presence, it's also something we can tap into as that support for our everyday consciousness, our everyday life, and what we're, what we're moving through. So mantra is a really important practice and to experience the, the different depths and levels uh, that mantra unfolds for us. So we'll start with the opening mantras. They're an invocation of our highest self, our highest consciousness. And so you're welcome to chant along uh, or listen. Just take it all in. Become absorbed in that. Because becoming absorbed in that, you become absorbed in the divine. You become absorbed in your true self. Shri Mata Kali
So welcome once again, you know, that stillness. That stillness is, in a sense, the gift of mantra, to quiet the mind and open just the spaciousness of awareness, that bare awareness, unattached, unidentified with mind or body, just the infinite expanse of awareness, the root of our being. So the Heart Sutra points at, Gate, gate, paragate, parasam gate, bodhiswaha. Gone, gone, gone beyond, completely beyond. Hail the goer, the bodhisattva, the, the bodhisattva. That's you, the one who's going beyond. Swaha, so mote it be. So that's what we're entering into through the practices, and that's why it's so important to be able to gather together and support each other and deepening our experience, deepening our awareness of what the practices unfold for us, because they're unfolding the truth of our, our boundless nature. And one of the ways that, that really Buddha was focused on, that he drew from all the many years of his yogic training, was on the breath. Because quieting and, and moving the breath in, in a nice, smooth, and even way also helps to then quiet the mind. And so the breath is, becomes one of the, the key practices in yoga and meditation for helping to quiet the mind, helping to soften the tension and have it released from the body. So breath is one of those foundational practices. And a very easy way to do that uh, is just allowing the breath to slow and deepen, to allow it to become more diaphragmatic, so the breath comes into the the belly, the diaphragm, and then up into a little bit into the chest, but it's mostly diaphragmatic. Nice and slow the breath comes in, and then nice and slowly the breath goes out. And now we have a, a raft of research showing the benefits of that in many physiological ways and even neurophysiological ways, that it helps to change both the state of our mind, the state of our body, um, and open the doors to who and what we are beyond those. So we're going to do a simple practice right now. And we're going to do this along with the, the harmonium. And very simply, it's going to be inhaling, exhaling,
go, come back to the, the spontaneous mantra that the breath is always repeating, the hum on the inhalation, the sa on the exhalation. That awareness, that bare awareness, that simple awareness of being, hum and sa, I am that, all that is, I am that, I am that, I am that. So developing our attention, developing our ability to let go of all the things in the mind and come back to that open spaciousness of awareness. It's kind of the, the root of so many of the practices because it's really that the practices are aimed at training the mind. Your bare awareness, your boundless awareness, your boundless loving heart, it doesn't need any development. It doesn't need any practice. It's there. It's the mind. It's the body. They need help. They need practice. So that's what, we, uh, that's what we focus on when we're engaged in practices. And one of the practices is also contemplation. And so this evening I also wanted to, since we're, we're doing the Heart Sutra, which is uh, a mantram and a, a chant, a contemplation of some of Buddha's teachings and direct words, uh, one of the famous collections of his teachings, his, his words, is called the Dhammapada. And so these are some quotes, uh, chapters from the, the, the Dhammapada. And this is a translation that was done by Thomas Byron. And, um, and so it has more of a poetic feel than some of the other translations are out there. So this is a chapter on wakefulness. Right? Because we're using our attention to wake up, wake up, wake up. So Buddha writes, Wakefulness is the way to life. The fool sleeps as if he were already dead, but the master is awake. He lives forever. He watches. He is clear. How happy he is, for he sees that wakefulness is life. How happy he is, Following the path of the awakened, with great perseverance, he meditates, seeking freedom and happiness. So awake, reflect, watch, work with care and attention, live in the way, 
and the light will grow in you. Attention, attention, attention. It's all about attention. So by watching and working, the master makes for himself an island which the flood cannot overwhelm. The fool is careless, but the master guards his watching. It is his most precious treasure. He never gives in to desire. He meditates, and in the strength of his resolve, he discovers true happiness. He overcomes desire, and from the tower of wisdom, he looks down with just passion upon the sorrowing crowd. From the mountaintop, he looks down on those who live close to the ground. Mindful among the mindless, awake while others dream. Swift as a racehorse, he outstrips the field. By watching, Indra became king of the gods. How wonderful it is to watch, how foolish it is to sleep. See, the beggar who guards his mind and fears the waywardness of his thoughts burns through every bond with the fire of his vigilance. The beggar who guards her mind and fears her own confusion cannot fall, for she has found the way to peace. So watchfulness, wakefulness, paying attention. You know, it's all about attention, over and over. That's what all the teachings and practices come back to us. Attention, attention, attention. Where is our attention? Where is it wandering to? What is it getting us into? What we attend to, we become identified with. What we become identified with binds us in the moment. So becoming very careful about our attention and seeing that attention is, is such a treasure. It's our energy. That's why we say we pay attention to things. We invest attention in it. So attention, 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 attention and wakefulness. These are at the root of practice. So in this chapter, Buddha writes about the one who is awake. The one is awake. The victory is his. He has conquered the world. How can he lose the way? Who is beyond the way? His eye is open. His foot is free. Who can follow after him? Well, you see, the world cannot reclaim him or lead him astray. Nor can the poison net of desire hold him. He is awake. The gods watch over him. He is awake and finds joy in the stillness of meditation, in the sweetness of surrender. You see, hard it is to be born, hard it is to live, harder still to hear of the way, and hard to rise, follow, and awake. Yet the teaching is simple. Do what is right. Be pure. At the end of the way is freedom. Till then, patience. See, if you wound or grieve another, you have not learned detachment. Offend in neither word nor deed. Eat with moderation. Live in your heart and seek the highest consciousness. Master yourself according to the law. This is the simple teaching of the awakened. The rain could turn to gold and still your thirst would not be slaked. For desire is unquenchable, or it ends in tears, even in heaven. So he who wishes to awake consumes his desire joyfully. In his fear a man may shelter in mountains or in forests, in groves of sacred trees, in shrines. But how, how? Can he hide from his sorrow? He who shelters in the way and travels with those who follow it comes to see the four truths concerning sorrow, the beginning of sorrow, the eightfold way, and the end of sorrow. Then at last he is safe. He has shaken off sorrow. He is free. Now the awakened are few and hard to find. Happy is the house where one awakes. Blessed is her birth. Blessed is the teaching of the way. Blessed is the understanding among those who follow it. And blessed 
is their determination. Blessed are they who revere the one who awakes and follows the way. They are free from fear. They are free. But they have crossed over the river of sorrow. So awake, awake. Arise and awake. This, this human birth, who knows if you'll get another. Awake, awake now. Make use of this birth, this life, this moment. Are we awake now? Are we awake here? Where is our attention wandering off to? What's calling for our attention? And where do we go with it? Can we stay awake? Can we stay present? Can we listen? Can we see? Can we hear? Hmm? Awake, awake. The root of that wakefulness is our attention. Attention, attention, attention. And then when we've cleared our attention, cleared our awareness, cleared our wakefulness of all the stuff of the mind, then the boundlessness of one's true nature, one's Buddha nature, is right there. It's already there, not created by the mind. These, things, these qualities, these boundless qualities that Buddha talked about of what our true nature is, the boundless love, the boundless joy, the boundless compassion, the boundless equanimity, these aren't mind-born. The mind is limited. It only, gives lim it only gives birth to limited qualities, limited experience. So, of course, we have to move beyond that. And there's so many ways that invite us to do that. It can be a beautiful sunset. It can be thunder. It can be rain. It can be lightning. It can be in the presence of another. So many things can invite us to let go of the ordinary mind and begin to notice the boundlessness that holds all of experience, all of creation. That's the root of who and what we are. That's why we practice, is to live that. To know that moment by moment, that's what it is to be free. That's what it is to go beyond sorrow. That's what Buddha's teachings are about. And that's really the essence of the Heart Sutra. The Heart Sutra is a text that is really proclaiming what happens when we open the doors of that wide open spaciousness of awareness and then look. And look, in fact, at all that we see really is mind. When you close your eyes, open your eyes, whatever it might be, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're noticing, what you're experiencing, all exists in the mind. That is what we experience. So when Buddha is talking about what he sees in the Heart Sutra, he's saying, oh, when you start to see that, when you enter the deep wisdom, the prajna wisdom, the prajna paramita, the heart essence of wisdom, from there you start to see the mind, and it's just these accumulations of things, thoughts, feelings, sensations, all kinds of objects. They're not who you are, and they're not that boundless awareness. And so the boundlessness of that awareness, that deep prajna paramita, that deep wisdom, that's what gives birth to the experience of freedom. That's what gives birth to our Buddha nature, our Buddhahood, uh, awakening to that. And as we've talked about in the past, another name for that state itself, for that boundlessness, is Tara. That's why she's called the mother of all Buddhas. That's why when we when we look at the Heart Sutra and see uh, what that's about, and we're going to be chanting that in a few minutes, it's, uh, it's called the Bhagavati, Mahaprajna Paramita Hrudaya. Bhagavati, the great goddess, Mahaprajna Paramita, the deep, most profound wisdom is in that emptiness, in that nothingness. The, anything that appears means that it's both ephemeral and it's in the mind. It's an object of perception. What's beyond all objects of perception? Well, to the mind, that's void. That's empty. Because the mind is an object of perception. You see your mind. You see your thoughts. You say, I have a mind. But you're not the mind. I have a body. But I'm not the body. Then what are you? Oh, this boundless of infinitude. That's beyond words. Beyond concepts beyond labels, 
beyond everything. That's where the practices lead us to. That's what the Heart Sutra points to. Enter that state and know the truth. So we're going to be chanting out loud the Heart Sutra. And the way we do it is we read through it aloud three times. And then after three times, we do this sort of summary mantra of the Heart Sutra. Gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate, bodhiswaha, gone, gone, gone beyond, completely beyond. Hail the goer, the bodhisattva, and swaha, so mote it be. That's you, that's you, that's your nature. So we'll begin. Avilokiteshwara, bodhisattva, coursing through deep prajna paramita, clearly saw that all five skandhas are empty, transforming all suffering and distress. Shariputra, form is no other than emptiness, emptiness no other than form. Form is exactly emptiness, emptiness exactly form. Sensation, thought, impulse, consciousness are also like this. Shariputra, all things are marked by emptiness, not born, not destroyed, not stained, not pure, without gain, without loss. Therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no sensation, thought, impulse, consciousness, no eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, no color, sound, smell, taste, touch, object of thought, no realm of sight to no realm of thought, no ignorance and also no ending of ignorance to no old age and death and also no ending of old age and death, no suffering and also no source of suffering, no annihilation, no path. No wisdom, also no attainment. Having nothing to attain, bodhisattvas live, Prajna Paramita, with no hindrance in the mind. No hindrance, thus no fear. Far beyond delusive thinking, they attain complete nirvana. All Buddhas, past, present, and future, live, Prajna Paramita, and thus attain Anuttara Samnaksambuddhi. Therefore know that Prajna Paramita is the great mantra, the wisdom mantra, the unsurpassed mantra, the supreme mantra, which completely removes all suffering. This is truth, not deception. Therefore, set forth the Prajna Paramita mantra. Set forth this mantra and say, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam Gate, Bodhiswaha. Avilokiteshwara, Bodhisattva, coursing through deep Prajna Paramita, clearly saw that all five skandhas are empty transforming all suffering and distress. Shariputra, form is no other than emptiness, emptiness no other than form. Form is exactly emptiness, emptiness exactly form. Sensation, thought, impulse, consciousness are also like this. Shariputra, all things are marked by emptiness, not born, not destroyed, not stained, not pure, without gain, without loss. Therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no sensation, thought, impulse, consciousness, no eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, no color, sound, smell, taste, touch, object of thought, no realm of sight to no realm of thought, no ignorance and also no ending of ignorance to no old age and death, also no ending of old age and death, no suffering, also no source of suffering, no annihilation, no path, no wisdom, also no attainment. Having nothing to attain, Bodhisattvas live Prajna Paramita with no hindrance in the mind, no hindrance, thus no fear. Far beyond delusive thinking, they attain complete nirvana. All Buddhas, past, present, and future, live Prajna Paramita and thus attain Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. Therefore know that Prajna Paramita is the great mantra, the wisdom mantra, the unsurpassed mantra, the supreme mantra, which completely removes all suffering. This is truth, not deception. Therefore, set forth the Prajna Paramita mantra and set forth this mantra and say, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam Gate, Bodhiswaha. Avilokiteshwar, Bodhisattva, coursing through deep Prajna Paramita, clearly saw that all five skandhas are empty, transforming all suffering and distress. Shariputra, form is no other than emptiness, emptiness no other than form. Form is exactly emptiness, emptiness exactly form. Sensation, thought, impulse, consciousness are also like this. 
Shariputra, all things are marked by emptiness, not born, not destroyed, not stained, not pure, without gain, without loss. Therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no sensation, thought, impulse, consciousness, no eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, no color, sound, smell, taste, touch, object of thought, no realm of sight to no realm of thought, no ignorance and also no ending of ignorance to no old age and death and also no ending of old age and death, no suffering and also no source of suffering, no annihilation, no path, no wisdom, also no attainment, having nothing to attain, bodhisattvas live prajna paramita, with no hindrance in the mind, no hindrance, thus no fear. Far beyond delusive thinking, they attain complete nirvana. All Buddhas, past, present, and future, live prajna paramita, and thus attain anuttara samyak sambuddhi. Therefore know that prajna paramita is the great mantra, the wisdom mantra, the unsurpassed mantra, the supreme mantra, which completely removes all suffering. This is truth, not deception. Therefore set forth the Prajna Paramita Mantra. Set forth this mantra and say, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam Gate, Bodhi Swaha. Gate, Parangate, Parasangate, Bodhiswa, Gate, Gate, Parangate, Parasangate, Bodhiswa, Gate, Gate, Parangate, Parasangate, Bodhiswa, Gate, Gate, Parangate, Parasangate, Bodhiswa. Gate, gate, parangate, parasangate, bodhiswa. Gate, gate, parangate, parasangate, bodhiswa. Gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhiswa. Gate, gate, parangate, parasangate, bodhiswa. Gate, gate. So now we sit in that stillness. Gone, gone, gone beyond. Beyond all thought. Beyond all the things of the mind and the body. That spaciousness of awareness. Open and free. That awareness that sees the five skandhas, sees the things of the mind. It is free of them sees all the different ways we perceive through the senses. It's free of them. That spacious, wide open sky of awareness. Free. Free. Rest there. Know your innate freedom. Be wakeful to that. Sleep to the mind. Sleep to the senses. Be awake to the truth. You are the Buddha. You are that wakefulness. Gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhiswaha.
Tarama, mother of all Buddhas. O Tarama, gone, gone, gone beyond, into the void that is wakefulness, into the void that is full. from the mind. The mind thinks all this is fullness. It's empty. And the real emptiness is full. We have to go beyond the mind to come to rest in that wisdom. The wisdom of our true nature. The ground of our being. Om Taritam Soha. Om Mother Tara. Grant that all beings be awake and free to walk their boundless nature of loving, compassion, wisdom, and joy into this world day by day, moment by moment. Om Taritam Soha. O Tarama. O Tarama. We take refuge in you. So we keep coming back to the practices to clear the mind, to free us of the compulsion to be identified with each thought, each memory, each sense of me, each little I that arises. 
can watch them. They'll still arise. But they won't have a grip on who you are. You are as free, eternally free, boundlessly free, loving and joyously free. Come home to that. And that's why we practice. That's why we gather for satsang, to keep the trunk company of that truth. We gather together on these Thursday evenings. What a blessing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing the fullness of your being, uh, the fullness of your practice, uh, the power of your commitment, the power and energy of your attention, your awareness, your wakefulness. You bring that into the world, infused with the loving, compassionate, joyous kindness that is who you are. So I want to thank you for coming here this evening and bringing all that you are uh, to our gathering and sharing that in the world, walking that into the world, uh, helping others be present with that and know the fullness of who they are. And thank you for all the many ways that you support Anamkara by sharing our e-newsletter and sharing our YouTube videos and your donations and um, your kindness, your generosity. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, and so next week we'll be back again. And uh, I want to thank you one more time with all my heart and with all my love for being with us this evening.